And we are back, rock and red in the house. We are back with one to rock y'all heads for real. Uh, this came came for red. Red sent this to me. Uh, it's a link. Y'all can go check it out on YouTube. It's uh, Crazy Bone talking about private prisons and hip hop. Uh, and we're gonna dive into this subject, man. And uh, I did my research. First of all, I'm gonna give a little disclaimer. Do not take any video you see as face value without going to do your own research get you some research because i i i don't take any video i listen to what you say but i'm a research right after i listen to it and if i find one crack in your story i'm gonna probably just not regard anything you said as being truthful but before we before we get to that let's just let's let's just, let's just dive into it what was your take on it? What was your take on it, Red? What you got? What you got? Well, be before we get started, I also I wanted to say the same thing. Um, I've watched that video and a few others, um, uh -huh. and I, I've watched a video of uh, four guys sitting around kind of debating it. Uh, just because I, I want to, I always like to do that. I want to hear other perspectives, and there's parts of it that seem crazy. So um, I don't know what my definitive opinion is. I, I, I can kind of let you know what I think, but um, the same thing. I watched a few other videos about it uh, and also, you know, did some research. I've done research already on this, but uh, yeah. So let's, what, what did I think? That was your question, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what? It's well, when I first heard that, uh, I think, I don't think it was through crazy bone. I think I found uh, somewhere where I actually read the entire thing that, yeah. that, that was written by the guy. Um, and nobody knows what we're talking about yet, but we'll get to it. But the letter that was supposedly written by the uh, record exec in 1990, and it yeah. just seemed like the, it seemed like a like a disgraceful like abomination if if of, of just a horrible thing if it was true. Yeah, just, I mean, just one of the, just an awful thing to do. Yeah, um, I mean that there's people sitting around plotting on things like this. It's very dark. Um, yeah, I so mean, to shocking. me, it, yeah, you say dark, but it, it kind of seems like American history to me. I mean, they sat over there in England and plotted to come over here and just annihilate Native Americans. So to me, that's just how America has always been. And if you don't watch it, it's always somebody out there like that. I mean, since the beginning of time, the devil has been right here on this earth and he ain't going nowhere Energy is neither created or destroyed. So if it jumps out of one thing, it's got to jump into another thing. So, uh, but my my thing that I got on it was that was my initial opinion. Yeah, maybe now, a initial, few years ago. That was your, so you, you, you go, but after you researched, what 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 did you come up with, and how'd you feel about it? Well, I find that it it could be plausible. It's it's plausible that it happened that way. Um, it all, but it almost seems like. I think there's some truth in it, no matter what. I think there were probably intentions there to do that because I remember when hip hop turned from conscious hip hop into gangster music, and I knew it at the time. I don't, I'm, I don't know if you realized it, but as a kid, I could see things going that direction, and I kind of thought it was sad even then. Um, but it, it almost seems like the way it was written, it could be a, it could be somebody putting the story together in a shocking way to, to. Put the narrative out there yeah um you know what i mean because it's it, you could compile that thought process and everything that happened and make it into a story like that where it was actually a meeting that happened and yeah between, you know music execs and owners of this new cca uh corrections corporation of america which had just started and then yeah. these folks who are in the music industry are uh some of them are shareholders in it and then possibly the CIA was there or some other people who nobody can really, um, nobody really knows who they were. Yeah. So yeah, I think there's some truth to it. But after I watched a few other things, um, I, I wonder if it's not just sort of a summary of the ideas and some of the things that happened. So this, this is what got me. This is what got me. So Crazy Bone says he's at this meeting, right? He was 19. He was at the meeting. No, Crazy Bone was not at a meeting. 
He's just reading a story. He's reading what somebody else is there. Yeah. Saying. All he's right, been so, in some. Have you asked him? Or he's done videos. He's been around some stuff. Yeah. Well, this is what got me. So this guy who, who, which he doesn't name, obviously he's reading the letter. It says that he stayed in the music industry. So you stayed, even though you knew this was going on, you made your money. And now we've got a letter from you 20, 30 years after you made all your money and your name's still not being said. It's kind of hard for me to believe that anybody wants to be a whistleblower these days without their name being there. Actually, uh, I believe it said he, he left the music industry after some number of years, but I don't know. He didn't leave immediately. He, you know, either found his way into a different genre. I'm sure he ran away from hip hop or rap. Yeah. You know, um, but he went, he probably, I, if I'm not mistaken, he stayed in it for a while. I don't think he said exactly how long it was. But again, that could be, you know, somebody making up a story about things so they know and, and just, of course, it's an anonymous person who nobody yes. can really nobody can get, get the real story from. Yeah. yeah, and that's that was my whole thing. It's like, all right, so uh, he he doesn't name the people that walked out. Well, if they walked out, why not name them? Well, because supposedly they, were, they signed this thing, but what does that mean at that point? Well, he said they so, signed the ones who stayed there signed, but he said some people walked out. Some people walked out and said, "I'm done." Why not put their names in? It? They walked out. They did the right thing. They're not a part of this. They're, they didn't sign anything. Why not put their names in it? I understand not putting anybody else's names to sign it, but this is what uh, what got me. All right, so I, I researched CCA. Of course, if it, uh, now, that's an interesting training. thing. I'm glad you, that's probably a good thing for us to focus in on. Yeah, so I, I researched them, and uh, you know, he says uh, Warner, Universal, and Sony. These are the groups are uh, the three biggest ones that supposedly have stock in it. And I now I'm looking at numbers from CNN.com like right now. So the two biggest shareholders were supposedly Vanguard and BlackRock. And that's according to hip hop uh, for change.org. It's a whole nother article that I read. And so it's Vanguard and Black BlackRock. I look up Warner Brothers music, uh, the biggest. Shareholder is not Vanguard or BlackRock. The biggest shareholder is uh, Fidelity Management Research Company, 10.9%. Yeah. The second places. one, the yeah. second one is Sand Capital Management at 18.4. Then the, the third biggest holder is Vanguard, 7.47. So that one throws me off now because you say they're the biggest shareholder and they're third down the line, which means they don't have majority share, which means they can't rule. So that was my first thing. That's just Warner. That's just Warner. We go to Universal, it gets even more. Now, I remind you, Universal holds Lady Gaga and Taylor Swift. So their biggest money is not hip-hop. They got Taylor Swift and Lady Gaga over there. So I go to theirs, and I can't even find Vanguard or BlackRock on their, on their top ledge. You got hedge funds, public companies they don't name, general publics, uh, and other institutions, private companies uh, at about 20%. But an individual owner... Vincent Bolar, B O L L O R E. I might be saying his name wrong. He's got 18%. Could not find anything with him in prisons anywhere. So, like I say, I like to research these people. Now, maybe they was different in the 90s, but stocks and all that stuff, it, it, you know, it tends to not change as, as much uh, as, as far as like maybe renaming it or, or passing it on to somebody else. Sony was the same thing. Uh, biggest shareholders, uh, prime cap management. Arista Capital Management, which is Arista Records and Capital Records, 1.3, Fisher Assets, Fidelity Management. Nobody, none of these names that supposedly supposed to be Vanguard and, and BlackRock, which are the two biggest holders in the prisons. But they're not the biggest holders in these music uh, 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 companies that they say. And like I say, when they say Universal, I, I think like Universal had, you know, uh, Death Row and Aftermath and all these people signed to it, but they also got Lady Gaga. You got Taylor Swift. And hip-hop's big, but you ain't touching them Taylor Swift and Lady Gaga numbers. Oh, like, yeah. Especially with the way those those tickets were, the Taylor Swift tickets. Have you seen that? No, I, I would never see a Taylor Swift ticket. No, no, no. Of course, <laughs> I wouldn't either. No, but look this up whenever we get off here. 
you mm-hmm. wouldn't believe what the the tickets are selling for for the concert that she, I guess, just had or whatever. Yeah, I know people are complaining that these tickets are getting outrageous, but I think people are trying to make up for the pandemic. Yeah, I mean, I've never seen anything like what some of these are selling for. And I can't and remember I think, the exact number. I think they're just I think trying the to make hundred, up. I think the hundreds of thousands of dollars and maybe. What? Yes, I think so. And I may be wrong, but it's. it's, it's <laughs> for a concert yeah, ticket? But I don't want to get us too off track. Wait, um, wait. You said me a Taylor Swift ticket costs a hundred and some thousand dollars? Um, I'll look I'm way. telling you, Taylor Swift gonna have to be at my house for about a week, <laughs> doing more like and singing. <laughs> what? Are you crazy? <laughs> like, wow, that one blows my mind right there. <laughs> but whoa, okay. But like, all right. So Price. the whole thing. Is... We'll get back to this. Okay, but I, but, I, no, I, think... I was gonna. I, I did want to say one thing though. Some of the fidelity, uh, Vanguard. I've had 401, I have money in Fidelity. I've had 401ks under Vanguard before. I think um, everybody has because they're tied yeah. into, I mean, they're tied into mm-hmm. everyone's 401ks. They're hedge funds. So I wonder, I, I wonder if the CCA is not obscured somewhere in there. If I, I don't know. Uh, and it possibly that, could be. It could be diversified and, to where we they're hid, you know. And I, I could see that because, I mean, it makes sense, especially once you know that that type of information is being put out there. And, and, you know, you, the first thing a, 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 a good criminal would do, a good white collar criminal, I should say, is if you know there's an article out there about you, you got some counter intelligence about it and you also hide what you're doing best you can, you know, uh, 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 whether it's, you know, shelters or, or, or dummy funds or dummy corporations, however you're going to do it. They, they, so I get that could be done. My thing is the way they present it is it's, it's black and white. It should be easy to see, but it's not that black and white. And I'm not saying it didn't happen because we all remember the change in rap, but I also remember the change in America too. The change in America. See, I, well, let's put it like this. I I'd like for you to explain that because I'm not. Okay. I remember the change in rap, uh, but I want. I'm not sure what you mean by the change in America. So I want you. Okay, so in the '80s, you know, we got the KRS ones, we got the self destruction, we got all this type of movement, right? We got the Black Medallions, which I had a Black Medallion. I remember. I was going to get into thing. that part of it too. Yes, uh, of oh. the conscious rap, conscious the rap, being the X Clan. Okay. Public enemy. Okay, yeah. all these people exist. In the 90s, what happens is the radio switched, but it was also the tone of of we got a voice now, and it was like, all right, we got a voice. We can go back to Africa, and what it was with the black people was, it's like, we can try to go back to Africa, but we realize Africans don't even like black Americans, so we're not trying to go back to Africa no more. We're trying to make it better in America. How do we make it better in America? We buck the system. And so it was a buck in the system is what gangster rap was supposed to be. You got to remember all the in the in the 70s, the Black Panthers was all, you know, all positive. And then they changed to gangs. They became the Crips and Bloods. So this is the natural progression of what happens when you're not listened to. You could be on let's all get together and kumbaya, but when people don't listen. It becomes gangsterous. It becomes violent. And, and, and that's what any that's why we're having all the the uh, mass shootings now, because people are mad. They're upset and they're not being heard. So now they're shooting, they're killing. And it's not just rap music. It's everybody now. It's the American. Yeah. Way. It's the American way is what we're seeing play out. So I don't think it was so just the corporations. It was a change in America because you got to think about it. Not the, the, the riots, 90, what, 94? 92. 92? LA, but uh, yeah. Rodney King happens in 91. I think it was it, 90 it, or 91 that Rodney okay, King Okay, so this is the first time we see it. This is before social media. We saw it. We saw him get beaten. We're like, whoa, bro. Like, we've heard about it. But when you see it and you know that everybody else saw it, that changes. It's no different than all of us sitting at home in 2020 and seeing George Floyd, rest in peace, seeing that. It changed everybody's dynamic on how they spoke about it. I think that was, I don't think people's paying attention to that as much. 
because I remember, not to mention the coming of age of people who grew up on hip hop. The coming of yeah. age. Because yeah. I mean, I'm over to Texas in 89. I'm, you know, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm still pro black, but I'm, I'm pretty pro black at this time. But I get out here and I'm in culture shop and I go from pro black to pro black and robbing people. <laughs> so it was again the culture shock and not being heard and feeling disenfranchised in more than just voting ways, which is I'm not being it be it turned me into a criminal. So I'm not imitating rap. I'm I'm feeling the same thing they are, and I'm I'm I, they're talking about it. I don't talk about it, but I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing what they're saying. I just don't talk about it because I'm smarter than most criminals. I'm not going to incriminate myself. <laughs> but yeah. it, it was it was it was not that the music did it. It wasn't prisons. It was a conscious decision I made in my situation. So I could see how a music, but I don't think it was just me. I think it was it was a lot of people, and 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 it was just a. A backlash of of not being heard, like in 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 black people's mind, we were going to get to a point where America finally said, "Hey, we sorry, y'all helped us, y'all are apart," and that still hadn't happened. We didn't think that happened until maybe Obama, and when Obama happened, it was almost there until we started to see the outright racism. Because people think Trump changed, and I say no, Trump didn't change it. Obama changed it. Obama made a way for Trump. Because it became some of the most racist stuff was said about him and his wife that I have ever heard in my life. And it's like, wait, these are the same people who want you to respect America. They don't respect the president. One of the best we've ever had. Squeaky clean. <laughs> Squeaky clean. Like no mistresses, no baby mamas, no kids, no sneaking nobody in the White House. Squeaky clean. Harvard lawyer, just whole life squeaky clean. But the stuff that was said, the whole Kenya thing, this, you know, whether he was born in America, come on now, you think America didn't do their job and check his birth certificate? But that became, you know, all of a sudden, you want to question the person who you wanted us to back all these years. Now you want to question because he's black. And the questioning and not trusting America did not come to white people until they put a black person in the White House. And that's a fact. Until then, America was white people trusted whoever was in there. They might not like them, but they trusted them. But when they put him in there, it became a distrust. Well, we don't know. We don't believe. And that what made a way for Trump. Trump played to that and then boom. Now we've got Trump in the White House directly after the best. We go to the worst. Because I agree. I, I agree with everything you said. I want to go back to the beginning of, of, of what you said um, about when we started with the 92 riots and, and, and black people not being heard. Now, I'm going to go, you know, it's it's easy for me to forget sometimes what I was learning and what I felt at that time, because I was I, I listened to hip hop very heavy. My best friend was black. Um, so I got into hip hop and I was listening to. For instance, like my favorite album, I think one of the best albums ever made was Ice Cube Death Certificate. Oh, he talked yes. about, he even said in Black Korea that, you know, we will, you know, he talked about the riots that may come and they did yeah. about a year after he put that album out. So I actually was very aware of the, what Black people in, in urban America, if we'll call it that, felt at that time. Um, and, and very, you know, it, it was something I wouldn't have known if, if, you know, I could only know it through music. And yeah. I did have, you know, a good amount of black friends. And, you know, I was at some point we'll get to it. But Justin's little brother introduced me to a lot of the Houston underground music, street military. Yeah, Boys. I ran. I ran. Uh, I ran and stayed up on stuff. He, he stayed up on, yeah. on a lot of but stuff. I, I mean, some things I'll never forget. And I'll, I'll never forget who put me on to some of the music that I listened to, you know, I that I, I continue to love today. Uh, but anyways, getting, yes, there, when I remember thinking and knowing that when the riots happened, it was because it was long overdue and some, something was going to happen. It was boiling over and these things have been going on for a long time. It's hard. Uh, it's hard to believe when you're a young white kid, even <laughs> if you do 
have black friends and but if you're not in south central la or a place just like that it's it's hard to believe some of the stuff that they're saying is true because it sounds outlandish you haven't experienced it as time went on in my life i've experienced all of it in one way or another and i don't know if that's because you know the world has changed but you know i i can understand it on a different level now but it was yeah. uh very different for me as a little kid um yeah that, that it was hard to fathom even for us. I think a lot of people thought gangster rap was the exaggeration. But then when yeah. you saw it, like, like I said, yeah, 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 then it sits in on you. You realize this is not exaggeration. They're telling their truth. We didn't have that phrase in the 90s, by the way, telling your truth. You know, that's a new one. Yeah, that's a new one. But yeah. that's what kills me about these youngsters. They're still telling the same stories. But, I mean, think about it now. That was then. These kids grow up with iPhones. They grew up in a whole different world than we did. I don't think anybody is as hard as a 1990 rapper ever was. <laughs> Nobody could be that hard again. Because it was a time, like we say, we all knew it was kind of boiling over and it was going to come. But there was not a kid under the age of 25 that had a hard life. Because you've had a cell phone. You've had the internet. Uh you probably grew up with an iPad. Uh, 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 you probably grew up in better neighborhoods than we ever thought about growing up in. And you probably grew up with friends of all diverse. I mean, that's maybe in Texas. Maybe, I'm, you know, because I've been in Texas now. Because, yeah. uh, uh, But it's still, no matter where you are, you still grew up with technology, which made the world a lot easier than before. Where we had to just listen to the music to hear it. They've got a cell phone. They've got the video. They can see it. They can see it, so it's a little different. But, you know, back to our point, the prison thing is, I, and I didn't get to, to research uh, uh, Mr. Uh, 23, uh, Michael Jordan now, and see where, where he falls in this prison thing, but I've heard over the years, and I do know, uh, I've researched at one time or another, he owns quite a bit. Uh, uh, quite a bit of his wealth comes from private prisons. So I tell people, that's one of the reasons I've never owned a pair of Jordans. When I found that out about him, it's like, wait, he's the hero in one point, but we're talking modern day slavery and he's an investor. Come on now. That's that's if we're going to get mad at somebody, we got to get mad at Mike a little bit <laughs> because yeah, and I, I, I have not researched that either, but it doesn't surprise me. I, I know for certain that those people would have gone to him to get him to invest just because of how it makes you know, sense. It makes sense. They, yeah, going it to makes sense. It makes sense. I mean, have you heard about this WTX thing that's going on right now? No. That I sent you, I sent you a link on yeah, it when I talking, first heard yeah. about it. Yeah. And it just gets crazier and crazier. We'll maybe we'll talk about that one once we understand what's going on. But one of the big people that was involved with that is Tom Brady and his wife. You know, and like, so you're gonna go to hmm big high profile celebrities if you can get them to invest in your thing you know off top if, if you're moving that kind of way right if you i mean it makes sense uh you want to you want to move your product fast to get somebody to endorse it yeah and, so, and, and, I mean, and get somebody that's accepted in every household like a tom brady or a michael jordan that cross the color lines certainly nobody was advertising or you know getting on there and talking about private prisons but I'm not, if they were going for somebody who had the money, they might go to him and try to have a meeting. And if, if he took it and he did it, then, I'm, you know, maybe he did. I don't know. Well, the funny thing about it. it is I don't think we knew pro prisons was private in the 90s. I think we all thought they were all government issue, you know? Like, I who just knew? assume so. Yeah. I mean, it's we're... insane. It's insane to think. That people, because if you if you go to that letter, this is the this is the most damning part of it all. Is uh, what was supposedly said was, you know, you're going to be invested in this company, and we need to we need to ensure ninety percent occupancy to be profitable. Like it's a okay. hotel. That's insane. Yeah. Now see so that here we are. We're gonna we're gonna we need to and, and allegedly um, we're gonna promote gangster rap, and that's gonna create create criminals. And we're going to keep these prisons filled. So yeah, and see me, yeah. that's a that's a kind of a hard stretch that because yes. gangster rap hadn't existed yet. How do you know it's going to work? Well, they put a name on it, and nobody in the hip hop community ever called it gangster rap. No. Nobody said that. 
That nope. was what the mainstream media called it. Yeah, it was not. No, it's because most of them wasn't media. gangsters. But the mainstream media was owned by the same people who also owned the record companies and also owned the private prisons. So now, see, I, I do get that the media owns the the, the record and and. And I can see where they say the promotion of a public enemy. <laughs> Excuse me. But also, we got to give a little credit to Favor Flay for killing public enemy with his whole crack runs <laughs> in the late 90s, too. <laughs> oh, when he was wilding out? I mean, yes. When he had, you know, he was getting arrested and doing all these things. So that kind of killed, killed a little bit of public enemies' uh, fire right there. Now, the KRS ones, the brand newbies, the whole tribal, the Tribe Called Quest still thrived. After the righteous that. teachers. Tribe Called Quest just found their own. Cult they found them. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, but it, but I, it, if you think about it though, it's I tribe found their way. They kept uh you know kept kept reinventing themselves, but they were exactly. still tribe. They were still oh, tribe. tribe. They, yeah. They didn't change. Nobody changed the music. They, they wasn't any less pro black. They just. <laughs> Focused on on less of the the uh, on more of a, a, a good feeling and having a good time more than the pro blackness, but I think it was because what's selling. I mean, you. I remember when KRS One used to be in everybody's top five. I remember that. I remember when he was in top five, everybody's top five. You say top five nine, I guarantee you, four out of five is doing what's so called gangster rap. Yeah, and there's not there's only a few old school rappers who still know enough or like respect remember the old way to give put KRS one in their top five. Yeah. You and know they're a real one if if it's somebody who's like, yeah, KRS one is one of my top five rappers. My thing was I knew he was a freestyle artist. He could rip anybody and stay on topic and still educate you. All right, we're in 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Okay. But still educate you, still educate you in, in what he's doing. So that was my whole thing. Like, man, that's that's a lyricist. That's an MC. But also think about this. Eric B and Rakim, still one of the greatest. Eric Rakim is still in a lot of people's top five, maybe top ten now. But his music fell off and it didn't change. What happened? His music doesn't change. He tries to sign the aftermath with Dr. Dre, and the album never even comes out because him and Dre just couldn't get it to work quite right. But that what happened? Yeah, because yeah, the yeah. last thing I heard in, in my the last thing I remember hearing from uh, Eric B. Rock him was on the Juice soundtrack, and I don't yeah. I honestly don't know what he did after that. After was it that, aftermath? He, he, no, he signed to Dr. Dre's aftermath. He had one or two songs, but the album just never could happen. It it, it didn't. It, it couldn't. I don't know. It didn't gel right. He couldn't rock a Dre beat. Dre couldn't get with his flow. I don't know what it was, but it doesn't make sense to me why that couldn't happen. But what happened in between those those times? What why was he not doing music? Was it the industry? Was it the or was it just what was being put out there? He knew that he didn't want to promote. And that's my thing is uh, it did did the taste of everybody change or did it because the, the mentality change, the music had to change with the mentality? I will tell you from my point of view, uh I, I believe I saw at my young age it going progressively the way of gangster rap. And I was as much, and I did buy it and I did listen to it and I do. We all did. But I was, I was also disappointed by it because I, I felt like people were going that route. And, and, and I, I actually found it kind of sad to be honest with you. That's so what I Do what got me was, this is what I got it. Uh, I saw the change go from what black people became the consumer and then we did not become the consumer. We became the listener. And then it became a mainstream thing. And the, the mainstream became the consumer. And I, if you check any statistic now, black people do not buy gangster rap. They don't buy it. They listen to it. They make it. But we don't buy yeah. it. It's brought by mainstream white, mainstream, all other races. I didn't want to say white, all other races. By I think it's, it's been that way. I think it, I honestly think it's been that way since back then, depending yeah. on what we're talking about, because I, I can tell you for sure amongst my friends that were white and black, I heard from black friends, I, I found things like the screwed up click. I found the, the ghetto boys before they became popular. 
uh, Street Military, one of the greatest groups ever, you know, yes. as far as I'm concerned out of Houston. Um, yes. But, Shut but up, it was I, more I, I, <laughs> Now, my white friends were listening to NWA and Easy and Too Short. Um, yeah. And, and things that we that were promoted nationwide as and, and I don't think too short would ever consider himself gangster rap, but it was the shock value from all the crazy stuff he was talking about. And, yeah. and I knew kids who just wanted to hear cuss words in music and they wanted to hear that kind of <laughs> stuff. So like you know what I'm saying? I mean, so yeah. I, I feel like NWA and Easy E got popular through the white with well, the white community as much or more than the black community. Yeah. The thing about it, what what got me with that is, all right, so I'm doing like you now. I got two time live on. Crew, two, live crew. two live crew. I mean, all right, so two live crew is two live crew, and they're talking raunchy. Nobody's listening. NWA's they're talking bad. Nobody's listening. It wasn't until both of these groups got into the national news where they're they're tearing up the CDs and they're fighting the 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 uh, the SEC. That's what, yes. yeah, it, that's what put it on the radar of all white people. They're just like, oh, who is this guy? Now they listen to it and they're like, oh, I've heard that song before. I like when they play that song. I, I'm going to go buy the album now. So now these people's got record sales go straight through the roof. And now you can't you can't shut them up because now they're on a national platform. Man, it, it's crazy how it happened. But controversy is what brought it to the front without their cases going to court without them stomping CDs and rolling them over with the, the, the cement rollers and without all that. I don't think that the white America even knows what it is. It's just a black thing. And it's like, oh, that's a black thing. And maybe I'll hear it. But I tell people right now, you go to any white bar, any white club in America at the 10 o'clock and you will hear nothing but hip hop. And it will not be the positive stuff. <laughs> no, absolutely right. And you, it would not be the positive stuff. And what what I tell people about that, the funny thing about it is, it's like you said, I, it, it's, some people, they, they grew up on it, but they just wanted to hear cuss words and music and they didn't, you couldn't hear it in no other genre. Where else and that was cuss? not me. That wasn't me because I was not that easily won over by stupid shit. There I got the first cuss word podcast. But, um, but, you know, but I knew people that did. And yeah. a shout, big shout out to my dad. For going to the the store with me, uh, with my lawn mowing money or whatever, and whenever I tried to buy a CD, and they were like, "You got to be eighteen to buy this," I'd be like, "Dad, can you come over," and he would just be like, "Whatever, let's sure." We need the parental I mean, advisory stickers for those who don't know. But I never try. I, I never listened to Two Live Crew um, too much, and I don't think I. I don't know if I would have showed that cover to my dad if he would have been like, "I'm good with that," because those <laughs> even the covers from what I remember were like pretty yeah. crazy. Yeah, I'm mean, the funny uh, thing about it. Uh, I can't even. Uh, I, in the '90s, when games were, I didn't buy nothing. I stole everything. <laughs> Sam Goody, I, so I stole everything. This, <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. I stole everything. I was a DJ. I had to have music all the time, and I just. And you were out. like Q from Juice. You were like yes. Q from Juice. Yes. You're like no, not Q. The other people stole Q. Tupac Q. and then stole. Q had to go up and like talk to the chick with the. Yes. Yeah, oh, that's my favorite movie. I watch the movie just I watch that movie twice a year all the time. It's just just for the fun. If I, that's one of the, the first movies I brought on Amazon, like in my folder. I watch it twice a year just because because that was my high school. I was GQ, Justin was Bishop, <laughs> of course. Oh he was Bishop. I, I'm not even surprised. <laughs> yes, he was Bishop. Steel was Ro and uh and, and, and Raheem was 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 a uh, uh, stone. That was just us. It was our click was four. That's what we did. And, and if I needed something to DJ, we were going to the radio rap and we were stealing all these tapes and CDs. And it was just how we did it. It was so when the movie came out, it was just like wow, somebody wrote our life right into a movie. And it's crazy, you know what I'm saying? Rest in peace adjusted that that how things played out, but that was it. But I say we lived that like lifestyle. And most of the stuff we listened to was positive. Like yeah. Pa- yeah. person like Paris, uh, Gorilla Funk. I forgot about Paris. Yeah, Paris. Uh, Cam out of out of California was out of uh, Cam was uh, jamming. Yes, out of all these people are out Peace of Treaty. Ice Cube's clicks. Yes, I'm gonna listen to Peace Tree after we get off here, man. That was a man. Song. See, oh, man, great albums like that. Never yeah. again. I've got tatted on my arm. Came from Cam, Cam's first album. How he spelled it. And when I researched, it realized it's from the Jewish Holocaust. I'm like, oh man, that's some dope stuff. 
So I, I tatted that on my arm like that. And it's just like, that's what I, even though I was out doing the criminal stuff, I listened to conscious, good, positive rap because I wasn't doing it for the show. It was just my lifestyle. Yeah, but yeah. it's funny how the lifestyle change. The people who in the lifestyle, they want to find a better way. The people who've got a better lifestyle, they want to listen to the most dirtiest, most gangsterous, killingest, cussing this thing. That's, that's, that's what it was for a lot of people, man. God, Justin, Justin was, you know, I, I could say this. He was a G who was quiet for what I could tell. Like he was not like his brother. Uh, and, and he was very, I can't say too many stories. I almost got in a fight with him and his brother with two other guys, this brawl. It's just wild, man. But shout out to Justin, man. He oh, was yeah. always, he, I always had a lot of respect for him because he carried himself well is what I'm trying to say, no matter what. Yeah, rest in peace to the G, bro. That was my dog. I had tatted yeah. to the heart. Tatted to the heart. We got the same. Oh, yeah, I, I, let me tatted. say it again, man. I always had a lot of respect for that dude. and He was always cool to me. Um, you know, yeah, but hey, man, it's, we, uh, all right, we got one minute. We got one minute. But, yeah, all right, so, I mean, so that was a prison thing, man. I, I think we kind of dove in it pretty good, and, and we moved around in the subject, but we stuck to subject this time. I think we did. We, we didn't move around too much, man. I had a little sheet over here of different <laughs> stuff we could go to, but I didn't want to because I wanted to, you know, try to keep it coherent, and that was, yeah, that well, was a good we could go back to uh, those subjects on the next one. Like I said, we're going to get at least twice a weekend on these, so... Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, it's going pretty good, and I like the way it's going. So, uh, and then so we're gonna keep it. I think this one is a, a little more, a little choppy and racy subject. So people gonna like this one because I, I don't think it's gonna go where they thought it was gonna go. <laughs> I, uh, whenever I threw that out, I wasn't sure if you wanted to go that route on episode two, but you know we did. And... Yeah. Well, wait. Sign it off. Rock and red right. in the house, That's man. Right, we signing off. Happy hey. Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. We was. Oh, oh, oh. I open my eyes.